Welcome to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. And today we have Emily. She is back again. She is a passionate Theta healing practitioner, instructor, and dedicated mama. Her mission? Well, it's empowering mom to embrace their intuitive superpowers and break generational cycles and thrive in motherhood. Emily, it's so awesome to have you back on. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. I am doing great. I am very lit up. I actually just released a new offering for my community. So I'm in that really high vibrational space and yeah, just truly enjoy motherhood. So thank you for having me back again. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the new baby. Um, it's amazing how much joy change and, you know, um, a new baby can bring to our lives. And, you know, my first question to you is, you know, how can mothers tap into that intuitive superpower to enhance that parenting journey? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I really teach in my containers is to get a clear understanding of the difference between living through fear and living through your pain and what lens you're actually seeing your life through and what that intuitive love inner knowing feels like. And it's different for everybody. It's different for every single mom. But it's important to make sure that as a mom, your vessel is clear. So you are able to receive those messages. You're able to discern between the fear and the love. And one of those ways is to clear up trauma from your body, yeah. especially from birth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what is it? They always, who was it? It's Edgar Tolle who talks about like the pain body, you know, mm -hmm. and we, it is a true thing. We really do harbor things within our body and they, store within our organs like certain things that what like I forget what is which like livers like anger and, and things mm -hmm. like that and I feel that like that comes out in ways such as like inflammation and things that are wrong in our body you know and it's our way for our organs and things to talk to us because they can't really communicate to us because they're inside so I love that it's important to you know have those understandings and know how to heal those traumas inside because it really can carry you forward into you know how you will progress with disease and things like that in the future mm -hmm. and as well you're passing on your beliefs and your trauma to your kids especially if you're breastfeeding yeah oh yeah because it's actually going through and doing that yeah I breastfed my first one for like almost two years he was he was attached to it. So hopefully he doesn't have too much trauma from me. <laughs> and this is why just even you doing your work, continuing to do your work is so mm -hmm. powerful because cells communicate. So when you're doing your work, even just by you touching your child, you're starting to send them that new information, which mm -hmm. is also why I don't really let anyone touch my daughter until I've like zipped up her org field, because I don't want her to receive other people's trauma, limitations and beliefs. Yeah, I think we forget that we are creatures of energy because it's something we don't see. And some people don't even believe it, but like we are energetic beings and we forget about that sometimes when, when we communicate and talk and do that because it's something we can't see to with our naked eye. Yeah, and that is one of the reasons why it is so common for moms to choose that path of fear because everyone around them is experiencing the same results. And deep down in their soul, they know what they feel is right and what's in the highest and greatest good, but there's nothing tangible or that immediate evidence to tell mm -hmm. them that this is the right step. Yeah. Which is why it's such an important practice to come back to strengthening that muscle of our, in our intuition. So in times when our children are sick, for example, or they we have our parents and our grandparents and all our friends telling us we have to sleep train, but deep down we want to co-sleep we can come back to that feeling like we know what's right. We can tune out the external world and support our child how we want to through love. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that one thing about the intuition, like we have to listen to our own intuition and our intuition isn't going to be the same as the person next to us, you know, and it's that thing that like Albert Einstein said, you know, the only real valuable thing is intuition, you know, like trusting this inner guidance and guidance that can lead to more confidence and effective way to pe making those parenting decisions. Mm -hmm. And I know that even in my, my bigger container, my alchemy and motherhood, which is a one-on-one -on -one container, 
we focus on this so much because what happens is that you know how they say it takes two years for your to feel normal again Mm -hmm. that's because the same hormones that we had during pregnancy are still running through our body so it actually takes us away from our intuition because we're all mucked up so doing something as such as a blood cleanse or doing a placenta ritual or even just grieving the absence that your wound now feels Mm. really kind of brings you back to that open vessel so you can channel your intuitive guidance as a mom. Yeah. You know, and speaking of, you know, techniques of healing, what are some practical energy techniques that moms can use like on their children, you know, to promote that well-being? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I really advocate for is muscle testing. I'm Mm -hmm. not sure if you ever tried muscle testing, but I'm obsessed with it. I've done that. That's how I knew I was allergic to milk. (laughs) Exactly. And it's so powerful and it's most of the time very very accurate Mm -hmm. Um, i use a practice called the sway test where you just stand up close your eyes center your energy you say yes and no to figure out which direction is yours usually Mm -hmm. it's forward for yes and backwards for no and then you just say a command or say a statement or even say a question so is it in the highest and greatest good to put my daughter down for a nap is it in the highest and greatest good to give my son this pineapple for the first time Mm -hmm. right so and then we see which way our body sways yes forward or back no and this gives us a really powerful visible and more evidence-based practice to help us build up that confidence to trust our intuition because if you don't have the confidence intuition cannot be there because then that doubt will kick in and all those limiting beliefs will kick in and that fear and everything like that so doing the muscle testing you'll get that answer and most of the time it won't be what you actually want Mm -hmm. And most of the time it won't be, um, it will be kind of riddled with fear because the fear part of you wants to go that safest, more known route. But this is really going to help to bring up those beliefs that may be blocking you from trusting your intuition, Mm -hmm. clearing up the trauma, and also giving you that immediate result of what happens when you do trust. Yeah. You know, and then speaking, you know, about breaking trauma, you know, can you share insights on like breaking the cycle of that generational generational trauma and like empowering, you know, mothers in their divine role? Mm -hmm. So one of the practices that I do pretty much in all my containers with my moms is theta healing. And Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure we talked about this on the last time I was on your podcast. And it's really about altering your brainwave state. So you come back to that age where you were primarily instilling these beliefs and these traumas, which is the first seven years of life, which is why as moms, we have that ability to now shape our kids, especially in those first seven years. So why not do the healing, especially during that time? And so one of the questions that I have my moms ask themselves is what is the worst thing that would happen if, Mm -hmm. right? And asking this question over and over again, will begin to peel back the layers of your subconscious of what your actual fear is, what that actual limiting belief is of what's stopping you from, you know, parenting against the norm, parenting consciously, maybe listening to your intuition instead of following what your parents, your friends are saying. Mm -hmm. And so by asking this question, you'll usually come down to one of three core beliefs, which is I am unlovable, I am unworthy or not good enough, or I am alone. Mm -hmm. And these three beliefs are formed within those first seven years of life, primarily the first three years when your root chakra, sacral chakra and solar plexus are being developed. Mm -hmm. And we probably remember from our growing up, our experience, our parents were taught that sleep training was the way to go. Mm -hmm. That was just the norm. A lot of parents, a lot of moms, a lot of women who come to me now as an adult they have experience and they remember vividly moments when they were left to cry in their crib alone and mm-hmm. they had beliefs around being alone and being afraid and being unseen and unsupported so balancing your lower three chakras and clearing the trauma the addictions the aversions from your lower three chakras in addition to you know really asking yourself what's in my subconscious what am i holding on to are two powerful techniques that i use with my moms mm-hmm. in order to help them to come back to their intuition to release their trauma and then to support their kids to do the same yeah it's crazy cuz growing up i don't think that like our parents generation was really like thinking about that stuff <laughs> just like, i want sleep I mean, this is what i'm supposed to do <laughs> you know and you know i did i did co-sleep with with both my kids for a little bit 
because I felt like it was what I wanted to do and it was the right thing to do. And I felt like it really helped with like bonding with them as well. And um, yeah, it was a little bit hard to like do some transitioning at like when they were a little bit older, but I feel like I'm glad that I did it because I'm never going to get that time back, you know, like then they're going to be like older and then it just gets to that creepy point, you know, and like, you just <laughs> and like, no, we're not, we're not doing that, you know, but like, I think it's important. Like, why do we make our kids grow up so fast? You know, like cut out the imagination, like you got to be on your own. And like, we're like, it's like, there's no like emotional support. Sometimes it seems like with uh, what to do. It's like, oh, it's okay. They won't know they're just babies. But yeah. I remember being a kid and looking up and being like, who am I? Where am I? And who are these people around me? You know, like, where am I? Like, and that was like really young. And I remember, I always remember that, like, where the am I? <laughs> and that's why I'm so passionate about teaching moms how to spiritually support their kids. Mm -hmm. Because working on that energetic field for your kids, such as clearing up trauma if you yelled at them right yeah. we all make that mistake of yelling or getting a little too aggressive or saying something that we regret well why not have the tools to clear that up right yeah why not like sleep sleep um co-sleeping is the best thing for their root chakra mm -hmm. so you listen to your intuition which is so amazing you did that because you help support them in feeling safe and feeling connected and feeling supported and independent yeah right so all these things that we see the milestones and we see, okay, mm -hmm. they need to be walking at this point, eating at this and blah, blah, blah. But we don't see the energetics behind mm -hmm. what's happening, right? Yeah. So when we come back to our intuition, we can begin to see all that. And then in my containers, I provide all the tools to help you actually support their energetics. Yeah, um, it's very important. Um, and so what are some other things besides healing trauma um, can mothers do to kind of help develop their children's spiritual development? Mm -hmm. So I actually am just finishing up a container called Balancing Baby Chakras, which is to teach you how to send healing to their energy centers, right? Because within the first seven years of development is when they're primarily their root chakra is being developed. So not aligned, not balanced, but developed. So they need all the support possible to allow them to feel grounded and safe in who they are. Right. So containers like that, where I teach them different theta healing programs and downloads and activations, I'm actually just releasing, which I told you about at the beginning, a, a offer that I'm so excited about called Baby Energetics Academy, which is diving into everything around the specifics around energy healing on babies. So connecting with spirits because children see spirits. Right? Yeah. And if we are unaware of what they're seeing, how they're experiencing it, and how to support them, we can shut down their own intuitive ability, saying there's no yeah. such thing as spirits and you're not seeing anything, or maybe it's a scary one, don't interact with it, but they might be opening up a beautiful gift of being able to be that connection between the spirit realm and the physical realm, right? Mm -hmm. So it's in learning how to navigate that, learning how to release spirits from them because they attract spirits easily, learning how to, um, yeah, we dive into so much, but it's also about just learning about the energetics of babies um, and starting off doing this work of connecting with their child, doing a body scan, that in itself is a huge practice that's going to have you really connect with them on a deeper level, heal that sacred bond, and then begin to see what in their energetic field needs healing. Yeah, I love that. I love that program. I'm, I'm really excited to have that out there in the world. I think it's really important. And Emily, it is time for the Power Mom Chronicles section. The questions may be a little bit different for you um, than the last time, but my first one to you is, what's a game-changing lesson life has taught you? Hmm. That every experience is a manifestation of your beliefs. So I experienced postpartum depression and I realized that it was a choice that I could heal from it when I changed my belief systems and my clear up my trauma. So we're all creators of our reality. Pretty yeah. Much. Yeah, that is that is very true. And reflecting on your journey, um, what other practical lessons or insights can our listeners apply to improve their own lives? Mm. We've talked about it in this episode, really coming back to your intuition, really coming back to healing your your womb, to come back to the the wild mother, the intuitive mother, the conscious mother, and realize that you are the leader for these new earth children 
and they need you to lead the way so they can be the light workers that they're meant to be. Yeah, I love that. And then offer a piece of wisdom for moms or anyone um, striving to find their strength and voice. Hmm. I just got to clear the energy around your solar plexus and throat. Mm -hmm. In order for us to really use our voice, we need to feel seen, we need to feel heard, we need to feel safe in doing so, and we need to have that confidence to do it. So again, working on those energetics, when you clear up that energy around your solar plexus and, sh and throat chakra, you'll be surprised how effortless it is for you to really find your voice and stand your ground and feel grounded in the essence of who you are as a mom. And the best advice you've ever received. Ooh, that's a good one. The best advice I've ever received is, it was a channeled message and that was to continuously live through fear or love. And I asked myself this question all the time. Am I acting, thinking in fear or love? And then that really continuously drives me back to trusting my intuition, walking my own path, tuning out the external world and connecting with my divine superpower, which is my intuition. Yeah. So Emily, how can people get a hold of you? How can people get a part of the that the, the Chakra Academy and things like that? So how, how can people get a hold of this information? Yeah, so I really hang out on Instagram. It's primarily where I am. So you can find me there, send me a DM. Um, and I'm actually just releasing a new podcast called the Wild Mom Podcast. And I it's love it. Live live podcast which i'm super excited about and so i have a free facebook community called wild mom community where you can experience that live and ask questions and connect with the speakers um so yeah you can come join me there in that community and i'll see you on instagram yeah well emily all of her links are down below in the show notes don't be shy go say hi thank you again for coming on and being a guest and sharing your wonderful insights and i hope to see you all in the next one thanks for listening Thank you.